Amen. God bless you. Thanks for being here this morning. I love this time of the year, this Christmas season, as we celebrate uh, the greatest event that mankind has ever experienced, the coming of Jesus Christ to this world. This morning, I want to talk about giving. And don't get nervous. We're not going to receive another offering. But I want to talk to you this morning about God's indescribable gift. God's indescribable gift. Let's pray together. Father, I thank you this morning that your grace is all sufficient. I thank you for your goodness, for your love, and for your mercy. I pray, God, at this very special time of the year as we as we think and meditate about what Christmas means and all that, that pertains to it, God, that your blessings would be rich upon our lives because this is truly the most wonderful time of the year as we celebrate the coming of Jesus to this world. God, I just pray for the next few moments as the Word of God goes forth that you would speak to our hearts, that you would change our lives. Help us to meditate upon the truths of your Word and to find life therein. Lead us, we pray, by your Holy Spirit as we minister this word today. Speak to hearts and lives as only you can, and we'll give you praise in Jesus' name. The church said, amen. I want you to look at a verse of Scripture in 2 Corinthians chapter 9 and verse 15. 2 Corinthians 9 and verse 15. I was <clears throat> reading in my personal devotions this week and ran across this verse early in the week. And as I, as I read this chapter, uh, that is indeed a chapter on giving. Chapters 8 and 15 of 2 Corinthians are chapters that deal with giving. As I was reading this chapter, and I, I ran across this verse that concludes chapter 9. And I thought, God, that's just a powerful statement. That's just what, the, what this season is all about. And the text says simply this, thanks be to God for His indescribable gift. Thanks be to God for His indescribable gift. Let me ask you a question this morning. Have you ever at some point in your life received a gift that was so special and so, uh, you know, unexpected and so meaningful for you and to you that you were just totally speechless because of that gift? Anybody? Yeah, two or three. You, you were privileged to receive a gift, just totally a surprise to you and totally unexpected. You, you weren't looking for it, but a gift was given to you that was so meaningful to you and so special to you that you were just rendered speechless. You didn't have the words to express the gratitude and the thanksgiving in your heart for the gift that had been given to you. Well, when I look at the words of the Apostle Paul here and what he's saying, I think that's kind of what he's saying about this special gift that he's referring to. Thanks be to God for His indescribable gift, a gift that is so special, a gift that is so meaningful, a gift that is so great that it can't even be put into words, the gratitude and the thanksgiving that we have for the gift that has been given. You know, in, in this chapter, Paul is encouraging the support of the church in Jerusalem. Go back to chapters 8 and 15, and you'll see the background here. He's, he's talking about financial and monetary support for the church in, in Jerusalem. He's encouraging the, the Corinthian church to continue fulfilling the promise that they had made to give support to the poor saints in Jerusalem. And as he's talking about this aspect of giving, he, he's really giving some classic uh, scriptural principles that we often use when we talk about giving. He talks about sowing and reaping. He talks about uh, being generous with our giving. He talks about uh, making sure that our giving is done cheerfully without a grudging spirit or a sense of duty or compulsion. And when we preach about tithing, we preach about giving, oftentimes we will use these verses that he uses here in chapter number 9. And so he's talking about the church giving a monetary gift to help the church in Jerusalem. 
So as this section on the collection for the saints comes to a close, we're left to consider what I, can, what I think is Paul's burst of thanksgiving. Thanks be unto God for his indescribable gift. And church, I think you will agree with me when I say this this morning. There is one gift of God which I believe beyond all others merits the, the, the designation, the distinction of being indescribable, and that is the gift of Jesus Christ. There is one gift over all. No gift can be compared to it. No gift stands beside it. Nothing greater than this indescribable gift that we are thinking about at this time of the year, the gift of Jesus Christ. This indescribable gift that we are privileged to receive is the very gift of Jesus Christ. As a matter of fact, the gift of Jesus is so great that it draws all other divine gifts after it. All other divine gifts follow after the gift of Jesus Christ. The Bible says in Romans chapter 8 and verse 32, He who did not spare his own son, speaking about God, He who didn't spare his own son, but delivered him up for us all, and I love this part, How shall he not with him also freely give us all things? In other words, if God has been so gracious and so loving and so compassionate to give us Jesus Christ, then all other gifts fall behind that divine gift of Jesus. If he has given Jesus for us, if he did not spare his own son but gave him up for us all, how shall he not also with him freely give us all things? And I love those last words. Freely give us all things. I'm so glad that God has freely given us Jesus Christ and all that pertains to him, his divine nature and goodness and favor, it all follows suit. He has freely given us all things. He didn't spare his son, but gave him up for all of us. Paul has been dwelling on the Christian obligation of giving, giving bountifully and cheerfully. And the great law that a glad giver is enriched and not impoverished, while the recipients of the gifts are blessed and give thanks to the giver. It is a blessing to give, is it not? We're not impoverished. We're not neglected. It is a blessing to give because we give it out of gratitude to God for all that God has given to us. So it is with God. He is the pattern of giving. And to us as recipients of his grand generosity, we express our gratitude to him for Jesus Christ. Thanks be unto God for his indescribable gift. I like how the King James puts it. I'm reading this text from the New King James. But the King James has it this way. Thanks be unto God for his unspeakable gift. And as I was researching and studying for this sermon, I looked at various translations, and it was surprising to me the number of translations that use that phraseology, unspeakable. To think that the gift of Jesus Christ is a gift that is unspeakable. It's so great in its power and in its essence. Let's look at some other versions quickly. The New Living Translation has it this way, thank God for this gift to wonderful four words. Again, I think back to a gift that you might have received at some point that just totally left you speechless. Stephen Curtis Chapman wrote a song not too many years ago entitled Speechless. And it has to do with the fact that God's mercy and grace is so great toward all of us that it in fact leaves us speechless. It's too wonderful for words. The New Heart English Bible says this, Thanks be to God for His inexpressible gift. Another translation, God's Word translation has it this way, I thank God for His gift that words cannot describe. All of these translations sum it all up. Right, church? 
that the gift of Jesus Christ is an unspeakable gift. The gift of Jesus Christ is a gift that's indescribable. Uh, indescribable. The gift of Jesus Christ is a gift that is too wonderful for words. This is what Jesus is to all of us. You see, Jesus Christ is the greatest gift ever given and the most privileged to receive. You may have had the privilege of being given some great gifts. I read on Facebook this week a friend of ours, a pastor friend of ours in Kentucky. His wife was gifted with a, a car this week. And I thought, man, isn't that great? I've never been gifted with a car before. You know, any car that I've ever had, I've had to finance it or pay cash for it or whatever God would help us to do. But, but I've, never, I've never had something that big given to me before. And they put pictures on Facebook. She was so happy and so elated because out of the blue, unexpected, she was gifted with a car. That is great. I rejoice with her. But friends, the greatest gift ever given and the most privileged to receive is still Jesus. Not new cars. Not diamond rings, not publishers' clearinghouse sweepstakes winnings. The greatest gift that we could ever receive is Jesus, and words fail to express our gratitude to God, but we do the best that we can with such limited means because He is deserving of all the glory and of all the honor and all the praise, and we give that to Him at this Christmas season, don't we? Thanks be unto God for His indescribable gift. Let me give you some points this morning as I, as I move through this sermon. First of all, this gift comes from an indescribable love. This gift of Jesus comes from a love that is unspeakable, a love that is beyond our words to express. I was reading in Ephesians chapter 3 last night, verses 18 and 19. Here's what Paul says, and may you have the power to understand, as all God's people should, how wide, how long, how high, how deep his love is. Man, that covers it, doesn't it? May you experience the love of Christ, though it is too great to understand fully. That's the New Living Translation. He says, I want you to know how great God's love is. I want you to know how high it is, how wide it is, how long it is. I want you to see that God's got you covered in His love. His love is so great for you. It boggles our minds to think about God loving us the way that He does. And He says to think about the love of Christ even though it is really too great to understand fully. And it is. It is. The love of God is too great for us to fully wrap our minds around, but yet we do the best we can. John 3.16 still boggles my mind. We all know it. Even people that don't know Jesus Christ, the Savior, know John 3.16. For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son that whoever would believe on Him would not perish but have everlasting life. Man, that is such a powerful declaration of how God feels for humanity, isn't it, church? For God so loved the world that He gave us His Son. You see, the love that God has is the cause of the gift. And the gift that He gave is the expression of, of His love. The gift that He gave is because of His love for all of us. And the expression of His love for all of us today is Jesus Christ. I've heard people say, well, I don't think God loves me. I don't think that, that God loves me. If God loves me, then why am I in the mess that I'm in? Why am I going through what I'm going through? I want to tell you, friends, I know that God loves me because He sent His Son Jesus for me and for all that will believe on Him. Jesus loves me, this I know, for the Bible tells me so. I believe in the love of God because it's been expressed fully in the person in the, and in the work of the Lord Jesus Christ. He loves humanity. 
Jesus is the expression of God's love. When Jesus was talking with the woman at the well in John chapter 4 and verse 10. Now, I, I didn't give the, the sound guys a lot of my scriptures today, so I just gave them the, the, the three main points for this morning. So just listen to the scriptures. They're not up here, but just listen to them. Jesus was talking with the woman at the well, and he said to her, If you knew the gift of God and who it is who says to you, Give me a drink, you would have asked him, and he would have given you living water. And those words, the gift of God. If you knew the gift of God, if you only knew who was standing here before you, if you only knew who this is that's speaking to you now, I am the gift of God to you and for you and to everyone who will simply believe on me. I am God's gift to you. And I want to say that to someone in this room this morning. You've come in here and you feel unloved. You've come in here and, you, and you, you feel unwanted, undesired. I want to tell you, friends, that's a lie from hell because you are desired, you are wanted, you are loved, and you have been a recipient of the greatest gift that could ever be given, the gift of Jesus for you. I've heard it said and I believe it totally. If one person was the only person that needed Jesus, Jesus would have come for that one person. I hope you feel that way too. What if you were the only one? What if I was the only one that needed to be saved from hell's flames? If, if you were the only one that needed to have a Savior, if you were the only one that needed salvation, Jesus would have come for you because that's how great the love of God is. And God sacrificed His Son. It's an indescribable love that God has for all of us today. Ephesians 2 and 8, Paul says, For by grace you have been saved through faith, and that not of yourselves. It is the gift of God. How many know you can't earn a gift? How many know you don't deserve a gift? The gift is just given out of the love and the feeling of desire that the giver has for the recipient of the gift. Not that you have deserved it or earned it. It wouldn't be a gift then. You'd, you, would, you would be working for it. It would be something that would come out of labor. But God loved us so much, even when we could not earn a minute, a second in His presence, God loved us so much that He gave His Son Jesus. It is the gift of God. For by grace you're saved through faith, not of yourselves. It's the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. John's Gospel says that no one has seen God at any time, but Jesus came to declare Him. John 1.18, Jesus said, if you have seen me, you have seen the Father. When Jesus came to earth, he came as the very expression of God's great love for all mankind. When Jesus was born, God sent the greatest gift that mankind would ever receive. Thanks be unto God for his unspeakable gift. Thanks be unto God. For his unspeakable gift. The love of God is greater far than tongue or pen can ever tell. It goes beyond the highest star and reaches to the lowest hell. The guilty pair bowed down with care God gave his son to win. His erring child he reconciled and pardoned from his sin. Oh, love of God, how rich and pure, how measureless and strong. It shall forevermore endure the saints and angels' song. When hoary time shall pass away and earthly thrones and kingdoms fall, when men here refuse to pray on rocks and hills and mountains call, God's love so sure 
shall still endure, and all measureless and strong, redeeming grace to Adam's race, the saints and angels' song. I love this third verse. Could we with ink the ocean fill? And were the skies of parchment made? Were every stalk on earth a quill, and every man a scribe by trade, to write the love of God above would drain the ocean dry, nor could the scroll contain the whole, no stretched, though stretched from sky to sky. O love of God, how rich, how pure, how measureless and strong, it shall forevermore endure the saints and angels' song. Do you know the background for that third verse? That third verse was inscribed on the walls, found inscribed on the walls by some poor soul in an insane asylum. Yeah. Some poor soul that was there, troubled in his mind, but yet enough of God's grace and God's love and God's mercy shone through him, through to him in that cell that he could pin these words on that wall and somebody saw them and used it in this song. Could we with ink the ocean fill? And were the skies of parchment made? Were every stalk on earth a quill and every man a scribe by trade? To write the love of God above would drain the ocean dry, nor could the scroll contain the whole though stretched from sky to sky. Beloved, there is no way for us to understand this indescribable love that God has for me and for you this morning. But we celebrate it. I said we celebrate it, the love of God. This gift comes from an indescribable love. Secondly, this gift involves indescribable sacrifice. Human love desires to give its most precious treasures to the objects of its devotion. Divine love cannot and will not come short of this human characteristic. The copy is not going to surpass the original. God wrote the book on love. Who knows love better than God? Because God is love. God is love. God, in His love for us, made possible the greatest sacrifice for humanity that the world has ever known. God's love desires to give its most precious treasure to the objects of his, of his devotion, and that's you and that's me. Whenever you're going through the molly grubs and you don't feel loved and you don't feel wanted, I want you to remember that you are the object of the devotion of God to the degree that God sent His Son, Jesus. Paul said, He that spared not His own Son, but delivered Him up for us all. He delivered Him up for me. He delivered Him up for you. God's love is so great. That if the, ink, if the oceans were filled with ink, the oceans would run, run dry before the love of God could ever be fully declared. If the sky above us was parchment and we were scribes and every stalk on earth a quill, there would not be enough room in that parchment sky above us to write about the love of God for humanity, the sacrificial love that he has for all of us. In Genesis chapter 22 and verse 12, I remember the words God spoke to Abraham. Abraham was there and he was about to give his son as a, as a sacrifice to God because God requested it. God said, I want you to take your son to the place I'll show you of and I want you to give him to me as an offering, as a sacrifice. He was the son of the promise. He was the child of the promise through which all the world was going to be blessed. But God says, I want him. I want him, Abraham. Give him to me. And Abraham had that hand drawn back with that knife in his hand, just ready to bring it down to slay Isaac. And the angel of God appeared and said, Abraham, stay your hand. Hold on just a moment. I see your heart. I see that you fear God. I see that you're willing to give the very best 
that you have. You're willing. You have not withheld your son, your only son from me. Now I hope you get the parallel, friend. That God, that God, out of love, sent his son to earth for us as a sacrifice for us. God did not withhold His only Son for humanity. Just as Abraham, with submission and obedience to God, bound and laid Isaac on the altar and stretched forth his hand with a knife to slay him, God sent His Son to this world to be born in Bethlehem's manger with the destination, an old rugged cross to affect my salvation. Friday night, Naomi and I went to Taylorsville, Kentucky. A friend of hers <clears throat> has been directing the, uh, the living Christmas tree there for several years, and she wanted us to come. So we went. Taylorsville, First Baptist Church, what a wonderful performance of that living Christmas tree and the gospel that was presented. But one song... One song among the many that were sung that night touched my heart like no other, and I sit there with tears in my eyes as I heard it from the cradle to the cross. From the cradle to the cross. Let me tell you, friends, this, this love that God has for us is indescribable in its sacrifice because God gave His Son for us, he did not withhold his son, just like Abraham was, was willing to give Isaac. God, in that, in that parallel, has, has given his son Jesus. He did not withhold his son for us so that we could be saved. The Bible speaks of the sacrifice made to bring about our salvation. 2 Corinthians 8 and 9, For you know the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, that though He was rich, yet for your sakes He became poor, that ye through His poverty might be rich. How many millionaires do I see here this morning? Yeah, all of us. Yeah, we're all not, not millionaires in a, a material sense, maybe. But we are all rich because Jesus Christ came to this world the, the rich became poor that the poor might become rich. He sacrificed the splendors of heaven knowing his destiny. The rugged cross of Calvary was his destination. From the cradle to the cross, he became poor that you through his poverty might be rich. Philippians 2, 5 through 8, let this mind be in you which was also in Christ Jesus, who being in the form of God, did not consider it robbery to be equal with God, but made himself of no reputation, taking the form of a bondservant. And coming in the likeness of men and being found in appearance as a man, he humbled himself and became obedient to death, even the death of the cross. I tell you, to think that God took the form of man for me because He loved me and because He loved you. To think that God would do that is indescribable. I don't know what to say. Paul writes of this sacrificial love in Romans 5. When we were utterly helpless, Christ came at just the right time and died for us sinners. Now, most people would be willing to die for an upright person. Some might even be willing to die for a person who is especially good. But God showed his great love for us by sending Christ to die for us while we were still sinners. How? Wow. Wow. That's powerful. We didn't deserve it. It wasn't because we were good that he sent Jesus. It was because we were awful. We were sinners. But God loved us so much that he sent Jesus to die for us while we were still sinners. Number three, this gift brings with it indescribable results. When God gave us Jesus, 
He gave us a storehouse of treasure that can never be fully comprehended or exhausted. The Bible talks about the unsearchable riches of Jesus Christ. I love this. He came to his own. His own did not receive him, John 1, 11 through 12. But as many as received him, to them he gave the right to become children of God to those who believe in his name. What's the result of this, of this gift? It's that I might be a child of God. It's that you might be a child of God. It's that we might live in this world knowing that we're in right relationship with Christ, through, with God through Christ. And to know that when this life comes to an end, we will have an eternity to spend with God and all those who have gone before, all because of what Jesus Christ has done. I heard yesterday, as many of you have, that Reinhard Bonnke died early yesterday morning. 79 years of age. That German theologian had preached the gospel for many, many years of his life, and he died peacefully at his home, surrounded by his family yesterday morning. 79 years of age. Preached the gospel faithfully. Billy Graham said once, when, when I die, it's just going to mean a change of address. I won't stop living. When I, when I finally breathe my last breath, it's not really death because I'm not going to die. I'm just going to change my address. Church, let me tell you something. Because of what Jesus has done, because of His indescribable gift, one of these days we're all going to get to change our address. Hallelujah. We're going to get to change our address. And that's the greatest result of this precious gift that I can think of, that I have the privilege of living for Him now and preaching His gospel now and, and fellowshipping with His people now. And one of these days, hallelujah, one of these days I'm going to change my address and I'm going to be in His presence forever. Forgive me for getting a little bit emotional, but when I think about that, it, 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 it just stirs me. Thanks be unto God for His indescribable gift. And even though I can't put it into words, I can do the best that I can by thanking my God for His love for me. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thanking my God for His love for me and for you. That God should love a sinner such as I. Should yearn to change my sorrow into bliss. Nor rest till He had planned to bring me nigh. How wonderful is love like this. Such love. Such wondrous love. Such love, such wondrous love that God should love a sinner such as I. How wonderful is love like this. Would you stand to your feet with me this morning? And I just want you in your own way to thank God where you are at your seat. I just want you to thank God for His indescribable gift. Just thank God for His love for you. Just give God praise for His gift of Jesus Christ for you. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. Thanks be unto God. Thanks be unto God. Thank you for the great love. Thank you for the great sacrifice. And thank you for the great result of what you have done. I give you praise. I give you praise. I give you praise, oh God. I give you praise, oh God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Beloved, if we go through this Christmas season and we don't remember the greatest gift of all, God help us. 
If we go through this Christmas season and we get so wrapped up in every activity and every get-together and every dinner, every gift exchange, and we forget the greatest gift of all, this indescribable gift, may God help us. Because without Him, there would be none of it. There would be none of it. i got to ask this question before I let you go this morning. Anybody here that does not have a relationship with Christ? Anyone in this room that you don't have a relationship with Christ? He loves you. He cares for you. He's got a plan for your life to do you good and not evil, to give you a future and a hope. He's got a plan for you. But He wants you to submit your life to Him. For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son that whoever believes in Him should not perish but have everlasting life. And the key is believing in Him. If we confess with our mouth the Lord Jesus Christ and believe in our heart that God has raised Him from the dead, we shall be saved. We shall be saved. He wants your life today. Anybody in this room, if that's you, I just want you to raise your hand right where you are. Pastor Mark, I don't have a relationship with Christ. I need Jesus in my life today. I want, I want, that, I want that life that he has come to give me. Anybody in the room? Pastor Mark, I don't have a relationship with Jesus, but I want to have anybody. Anybody. God bless you. God bless you. Father, we're leaving this place today saved. We're leaving this place today in right relationship with Jesus. Now, Lord, keep us and bless us during this Christmas season. Guide and direct our lives in everything that you would have for us, Lord. And help us always to remember that Jesus is the reason for the season. God's indescribable gift is what it's all about. And we give you praise for that gift today. In Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you. Shake somebody's hand this morning. Well, just love on them. See you back again next time together. Amen.